son of a bitch. Everybody, this is Matthew Movies coming at you with the latest in my movie discussion series. And this time around, I'm going to be talking about vampire films and whether or not they're relevant anymore. And the way in which I thought I would tackle this conversation is looking at the various eras of vampire films or styles as well. And right off the hop, I want to talk about like the classic style of vampire movies. And I'm not necessarily talking about movies that took place in the 50s or the 70s, or not took place, but were put out in the 50s or the 70s. I'm talking about the style. So right off the hop, I mean, you got to look at the Bela Lugosi version of Dracula that was a classic. I mean, the guy really just started off the whole vampire thing to a large degree. I mean, obviously there were vampire movies beforehand, but if you think of classic vampire movies, you think of Bela Lugosi. But then you also look at the Bram Stoker's Dracula, the, the Francis Ford Coppola made, put out in the 90s, the, with Gary Oldman as Dracula. I mean, just the concept of Dracula as a character is it, it, absolutely classic. I absolutely adore that movie. I think it was just so fantastically well made. A very modern version of a classic story. And, and, and around the same time period, the movie interview with the vampire came out which again I, I think it is much more in the classic mold I mean yes these are modern movies they have modern special effects they're they, they're told with the kind of pacing of, of more modern films for sure but the stylistically speaking they, they're much more throwbacks to the the, the Renaissance era of vampires and, and I, I think both of them both those movies are freaking awesome and, and really to me when those movies came out those were that's the last time vampire movies were really on in Vogue. Like they, that was their last zenith that I could think of. I mean, the, the only other classic vampire film that was kind of more modern is the version of, of vamp, the vampire we see in The Monster Squad, but obviously the movie on a whole isn't a, a vampire film, and it's Clear, clearly not a uh, classic style it's more of a, a kids movie that just happens to have that classic vampire in it but I mean to me the, the really the demarcation mo mo point where vampire movies were largely completely ruined is, is the release of the Twilight films I mean I know those movies ha have their audience and it, they weren't made for someone like me by any stretch of the imagination but I, I feel like they kind of ruined the genre because they, they took the, the whole concept of them and they made them all about like the romance and, and the fact that they sparkled and all that stuff and it was all much more about like like just stupid teen crap instead of being about like what they're not horror films by any stretch of the imagination and ever since then I mean you look at the, the vampire movies that c came out after that it, there's just really not very many at all in fact since the 2010s I mean there's been such a small amount of, of high profile vampire movies that made any kind of impact I mean like one of the most notable is the Hotel Transylvania series which are obviously are animated films that are put out by Adam Sandler and, and that whole crew and I mean they have Selena Gomez and a few other people and that kind of thing but again they're not even just straight up vampire movies they're first off they're animated they're family friendly and there's all kinds of monsters in it i mean yes the the two main characters are vampires but I mean, that's uh, one of the more relevant vampire films that have come out. You have what, what We Do in the Shadows, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. I adore that movie. Uh, one of my favorite vampire movies of all time. And it's, you know, it's not a scary movie of all time, uh, uh, but it is just the imagination. But it does speak to the fact that the vampire movie can be kind of moldable and, and, and fit a, a number of different genres. And to me, it was absolutely hysterical. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. That, to me, that's the best, the best vampire film post 2010 you have uh the, the underworld movies that are to me are just really a, a mixed bag they, there's not too much about them that I, I i love all that much i mean they're they're okay but they're, there's just nothing all that great you have let me in which is the the remake of let the right one in who which i mean both movies are fantastic let me in it absolutely is a quality film in my point of view from my point of view i prefer the original i think it is is better it's got more it's got a creepier tone to it i think it is 
more effective, but by no means do I think that the, the remake was, was flawed. But I mean, really, that, that and the, the, the movie with uh, Tilda Swinton and uh, Tom Hiddleston, it's, I'm sorry, but the title is kind of uh, not getting popping into my head at the specific moment. But aside from, from those movies, there really hasn't been a, a notable movie that came out in, since 2010, which I think is really a shame because I, I, I feel like these vampire movies could be done great. I mean, you look at so a, a lot of the classic vampire movies, they're not classic, but the ones that you know people love from the last several decades. I mean, none of them are necessarily in that vein of the the the. the Dracula movies are not all of them, I should say. I mean, like I said, you have the Branch Stokers and the Interview with the Vampire, but you also have movies like The Lost Boys, which, uh, you know, it's a modern take on, on a vampire film. It's like a teen movie to a certain degree, but it's also got a lot of really creepy sequences, and it's all about, you know, character I, I thought it was fantastic, and Near Dark was freaking awesome. I mean, absolutely love that movie bill paxton absolutely kills it in it and and it's got in the style of that film i mean it's just dripping with style it's one of the, my favorite vampire films of all time for sure i mean salem's lot is much more in that classic tone as well i mean you, you the kurt barlow vampire is definitely brings to mind like the the draculas and stuff like that and the way in which he moves and the and the being in the the casket and all that kind of stuff i mean it's a stephen based on a stephen king story and he doesn't look like a classic vampire by any stretch but definitely fits kind of that mold better yeah and i mean and again if you're looking for vampire comedy movies you have the buffy the vampire slayer which is certainly not uh, the best movie of all time and i know it went on to be a tv show that people love a great deal more but to me i had some pretty entertaining moments i mean paul rubens as a vampire and it's pretty hilarious even though i mean you know in his personal life that guy's pretty sketchy but i mean in that movie i thought he was absolutely hysterical and, and blade I, I mean absolutely kills it it's it's a vampire movie that it has a lot more action in it and i think he's totally totally badass and he's so so cool and, and another one that has a lot more action in it too is from dust till dawn the rubber rodriguez brent tarantino collaboration that i thought was just absolutely dripping with with fantastic scenes and and and, and you know it's really cool too because the first half of it is it really you have no idea that's going to be a vampire movie and then once that reveal takes place it's completely balls to the wall and, and there's so many awesome vampire characters that are created in it and and and, and i mean there's just there's a lot of characters to invest in and I, I just think it's overall just a really really well done movie so i mean you look at all these these classic vampire movies that they and again i'm not talking about like they're classic in the style but they're, they're classic in the fact that people really dig them and personally i i absolutely adore most of them and, and the idea that just the twilight came out and completely ruined them and, and now people don't are, you know are very standoffish about them i, I think it's a real shame i mean they really it's there's been a dearth of quality vampire films in the last decade and, and i think that's absolutely just sad because there's so many so much potential there i mean you look at all most of the movies i talked about here they, they took the the core concept of the vampire and, and twisted it and, and made it into something awesome and, and, and there, there's just so many ways in which you could tell these stories and, and the, the just absolutely work and i would love to see it return but as to the core question of this vi video are they relevant i gotta say no they're not right now they should be but they're not so those are my thoughts on vampire films let me know in the comment section below what you think if you agree if you disagree if you, if you would like to see them make a comeback it, it, whatever other than that please hit that like button hit that share button it makes it much more likely that other people will come check out this video and let me know what they think and, and that would be awesome because i love 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 talking to people about movies and speaking of which if you are new here or you just haven't done it yet please 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 hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you can find out when I put out a new video and you can see my latest review or movie discussion or in YouTube review or whatever. Please, I'd love to have you talk to check out my videos and give me some feedback. That'd be awesome. Other than that though, have yourself a good day.